Oh, hey there! My name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs. Today, I'm playing Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana Originally released on the Super Famicom is Seiken Densetsu 3 on September 30th, 1995. North America and Europe didn't see it officially translated until the collection of Mana on June 11th, 2019. This was always a game that interested me. When we got the remake in 2020, I jumped onto that and loved every second of it. So today we will be talking about the original release and how it plays in 2024. Before we get into today's review, make sure to show your love by hitting that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me, what do you think about Trials of Mana? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you played the original? What about the remake? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, let's pop some corn, ice that drink, and let's get into Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana did something relatively unique with its story, and it's brilliant for it. Trials of Mana features six main characters, and depending on who you choose as your main character, you get to see a unique intro, and one of three different final dungeons. As for the characters and who they are, let's talk about them. Duran is an orphaned mercenary from Valsina. Angela is the rejected princess of Altina. Kevin is the half-human, half-beast prince of Ferolia. Charlotte is a half-elf cleric from Wendell, and the embodiment of Uwu. Hawkeye is a member of the Thieves Guild of Navarro, and Reese is the Princess of Laurent and leader of the Amazon army. The characters are all incredibly interesting, and have interesting dynamics with one another. Each character has a pair character that offers a more in-depth story scene. These pairs are Duran and Angela, Kevin and Charlotte, and finally Hawkeye and Reese. I only did one playthrough myself, I went with Kevin as my main, and then Charlotte and Angela as my two supporting characters. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, and want more JRPG-centric lists and reviews, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. After your character's introductory scene, the plot is generally the same for each character up until the final dungeon. Your main character will go to sleep in the town of Astoria, and in the middle of the night, they wake up to a bright light. After following this bright light, it turns out to be a fairy of mana. After this fairy bonds with your main character, you hear a loud noise from the town of Astoria. Rushing back to Astoria, you see that the town has been ransacked and destroyed by the Beast Kingdom of Ferolia. Fairy then instructs you to go to Wendell and speak for the Priest of Light for one reason or another. This reason is determined by your main hero's motivation as outlined in the intro scene. Once you get to Wendell, you are asked to go to each mana stone and collect each elemental spirit of mana so that you can retrieve the mana sword from the sanctuary of mana. After traveling to each mana stone, collecting the eight elemental spirits, and retrieving the mana sword, Fairy is kidnapped by the two main villains of your current storyline and held hostage in exchange for the mana sword. Once the trade is made, the god beasts or benevidons are released from the mana stones to cause havoc upon the world. Your heroes then defeat the Benevidons, only to find out that each Benevidon that gets defeated powers up the main villain, bringing them ever closer to godhood. After defeating every Benevidon, as well as the villain's minions, you go to the Sanctuary of Mana and defeat the main villain to prevent them from destroying the Mana Tree. Fairy then fuses with the Mana Tree and is reborn as the Mana Goddess in a thousand years. But until then, Mana will not exist. Once the game ends, each character has their respective conclusion and returns to their homeland, the end. I honestly love the story. It's incredibly dark for such an innocent looking art style and isn't afraid to rip your heart out. A lot of the intro scenes for each character are incredibly emotional and heart-wrenching. Kevin's in particular really hit me. Trials of Mana is definitely a game for people that like having those heartstrings tugged at. Ooh boy, let's talk about this gameplay. Just to preface this, yes, I am aware it's an action RPG from 1995, 
and I know action RPGs were still getting their groove on there, but there were parts about this game that frustrated the heck out of me. Trials of Mana is a massive improvement on Secret of Mana in every single way. As for combat, hits actually register, and if you miss, there are actual miss logos that come up, so you're not wondering if your attack actually missed the enemy, or if they evaded the attack. You no longer have to attack once, and then wait 1-2 to two seconds before attacking again. The charge bar has disappeared. Special attacks aren't used by holding a button for several seconds anymore. Instead of charging by holding a button, every time you land a regular attack, you build up a gauge. Once that gauge is full, you press a dedicated button, and you use a special attack. Each character has several different special attacks that range from levels 1 to 3 and are determined by the class you chose. The class changes are something I'll get into shortly. On top of regular attacks and special moves, a wide variety of the characters have spells. Spells can have a wide variety of effects, such as elemental damage, healing, buffs, or debuffs. My issue with spells is first of all, you have to manually cast these spells. The AI will never use these spells on their own, and opening the ring menu is very slow and very cumbersome. Furthermore, when you cast a spell, it freezes the entire screen until the spell is done playing out. For an action RPG, this really interrupts the gameplay and slows it down. As for what really bothers me with the combat, there are a few things. Starting off, semi-frequently, the game just didn't register my inputs, be it pressing the attack button, the special button, or the menu button. The game just seemed to swallow inputs and I'd have to press the button 3, 4, or even 5 times before it actually worked. It was really annoying, but the worst thing related to the combat? Enemies that have healing spells, they will use them, and they will never stop using them, with seemingly infinite MP. Even having your whole party target that enemy, there are times, especially mid to late game, where enemies can outheal the damage that you're capable of dealing. So you're fighting with RNG, hoping that the enemy decides to use something that isn't a healing spell. This, coupled with the spell freeze aspect that every spell has, it just leads to certain portions of the game being incredibly frustrating. Alright, so it's time to talk about the class changes. In Trials of Mana, each character can go through two class changes one at 18, and another at 38. Once you get to level 18, you go visit a mana stone or the statue at the Sanctuary of Mana, and you can choose either a light or a dark class. Light classes tend to be more support based, and dark classes seem to focus more on damage dealing or debuffs. When you change your class, you will get a level 2 special attack, which is used by building up more of your super gauge with more attacks, and on occasion, you'll get spells. Class changing at level 38 is a little bit more specific. You still have a light and a dark class. However, instead of just interacting with a mana stone, you have to obtain a specific class change item from a question mark seed. The class change items from those seeds are completely down to RNG. You can save scum them by loading and reloading to get a preferred item, but I found it much more effective to just grind like 6 to 10 question mark seeds and then see what you get from them. The level 3 classes are incredibly powerful, and the level 3 specials that come alongside them are screen clearing destruction and incredibly satisfying. Outside of battle, the game is typical RPG and really isn't that interesting. NPCs aren't generally all that unique, their dialogue is just there, and exploring cities doesn't really amount to any real benefits. You can't really loot many houses, and towns seem to just exist to push you into the next story event. Save for maybe the black market, I found myself just rushing through towns to progress with the plot because every instance of the story was amazing. So the story is great, the gameplay is decent, what about graphically? If you've been around my channel before, it won't be a surprise that I adore pixel art. Trials of Mana is up there as one of the most gorgeous games when it comes to pixel art. Each character is so excruciatingly detailed in every aspect. In Trials of Mana, it's so detailed that you can tell what the design is on Kevin's pants. 
or you can tell what Duran's armor is ideally supposed to look like. Or if Angela's pixelated cleavage is more to your jam, Trials of Mana has got your back. Hum, anyways. Trials of Mana is a victim to recolors of enemies and even your characters. Each one of your character classes is generally just a recolor of your basic skin, outside of the level 3 classes, which are a little bit more unique. It's the same thing with enemies. There are 27 different types of enemies, but 66 different regular enemies total. So naturally, that means 2-3 to three recolors of each type of enemy. It's not a huge loss, but I would have liked a little bit more uniqueness with the enemy types. Another thing that really got on my nerves graphically is how similar rooms looked. There were numerous times where I would get lost in a castle or a forest because I couldn't tell the difference between one room and another. It just led to running around in circles and constantly fighting things over and over, hoping I could accidentally navigate in the right direction. Of course, that might be more of a commentary on my sense of direction than the game's design. Ah well, a minor grievance on an otherwise beautiful looking game. So, the graphics are great generally, but the music, how is it? Do you remember my Secret of Mana review? If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out after you're done here. Maybe check out the rest of the Road Divisions of Mana while you're at it. Remember all the positive words I said about that game soundtrack? Well, Trials of Mana, through the magic of Squaresoft, somehow manages to exceed that substantially. Normally, at this point, I would tell you some of my favorite tunes in the game, but with Trials of Mana, that's easier said than done. The Trials of Mana soundtrack is absolutely stellar. Every single track of music is an absolute bop. Hiroki Kikuda outdid himself with this game, and I wouldn't doubt that it's probably the best music he has ever composed. The soundtrack is a non-stop banger, and it just gets better and better as you go on. The sad moments with their accompanying music amplify those scenes to new levels, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, the incredibly hype moments are also boosted to new levels of insanity thanks to the music. I love this soundtrack so much, I just can't get enough of it. Alrighty, so the length of the game. How long is it? Well, as I mentioned before, Trials of Mana has three different storylines, and each storyline is roughly 20 to 30 hours depending on your playstyle. So you can expect to play about 60 to 90 hours to see the entirety of the game. As for the pacing, the pacing of this game is nothing short of perfect. The game is not grind heavy. If you fight every enemy you run up against, you'll be adequately leveled. You can just casually stroll through each dungeon and field map, killing all that threaten you and be adequately leveled with little to no difficulty. Trials of Mana gets rid of the weapon and magic leveling system from Secret of Mana, so that solves some of the aggravating grinding from the previous game. It's perfect in every sense of the word. Alright, so there was the original in 1995, and then the game got a remake in 2020. But which is the best version of Trials of Mana? Well, the Trials of Mana remake from 2020 is much more streamlined, expanded upon in almost every aspect and has extra post-game content. Whereas the original has a charm that cannot be matched with its gorgeous pixel art and 2D gameplay. Personally, this is just my point of view. I'm sure that there will be people that prefer the original and that's okay. But personally, I would suggest the remake if you're looking for an experience that won't stress you out. The original is great, but unfortunately, I feel like it didn't age well and the remake fixed every issue I had with the original. Can't go wrong if you'd rather a classic sprite and pixel based RPG adventure though. So there you have it. Trials of Mana is a wonderful and an absolutely beautiful game that is worth a playthrough, regardless of how you play it. Have you played Trials of Mana? Either the original or the remake? And did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want more JRPG content, such as RPG lists and RPG reviews, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Anyways, thanks for watching, thank you for your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super